In this video, I'll show you how to implement OpenTelemetry inside of a .NET 8 application. We're going to configure the holy trinity of observability, metrics, traces, and logs, and I'll show you how to configure an exporter so that you can monitor your data using something like Grafana or the Aspire dashboard. First, I'm going to spend a moment to explain what OpenTelemetry is, and then we're going to dive into the implementation. OpenTelemetry is a standard for generating, collecting, and exporting your telemetry data, such as metrics, traces, and logs. Here's a high-level overview of how this works. You have your individual services that are being instrumented using OpenTelemetry, and these services will be pushing telemetry data into a collector. The same also applies for your infrastructure components, such as your proxies, your cloud components, and your managed services like databases and third-party APIs. Once you collect all of this data, then you can plug in an observability frontend, which is typically some dashboard like Grafana or the Aspire dashboard, is going to allow you to monitor your telemetry data and figure out what is the state of your system. The purpose behind open telemetry is to collect what's called a signal, and signals are something that are generated throughout the functioning of your application. The three most common types of signals are traces, metrics, and logs. And now let me show you how to configure open telemetry inside of a .NET application. We're going to start by installing some NuGet packages into our solution. And I'm going to browse for open telemetry. The first two libraries that I'm going to install are going to be OpenTelemetry extensions hosting. This is going to allow us to integrate with our .NET runtime. And the second NuGet package that I'm going to install is going to be the OpenTelemetry exporter. These are all standardized OpenTelemetry packages that allow you to integrate with the OpenTelemetry standard. And I'm also going to install some instrumentation packages that are going to plug into the components that we have inside of .NET, such as ASP.NET Core, and the HTTP client. So I'm going to install the ASP.NET Core instrumentation and the HTTP instrumentation, and you will see what these do in just a moment. And if you also search for preview packages, you can find even more NuGet packages that you may want to install. And the one that I'm looking for is the instrumentation package for EF Core. So let's go ahead and install that one. The reason that this package is in preview is probably because the API service isn't standardized yet. So we have our OpenTelemetry packages installed. Now let's see how we're going to use them. You're going to configure OpenTelemetry as any other service. So let's start by saying builder services, and I'm going to say add OpenTelemetry. This is going to give us back an OpenTelemetry builder that we can further use to configure metrics, traces, and logging. But before that, I'm going to call the configure resource method so that I can provide a delegate for my resource builder. And what I want to do is to define my application service. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can give a descriptive name to the service, which is our application that is generating all of this open telemetry data, and I will call it coffee shop. After this, I'm going to call with metrics, which gives me access to the meter builder provider and we're going to use it to configure our application metrics. On the metrics object, we have access to a bunch of methods. We can add a custom meter and we can add some instrumentation. So for example, I can call the add meter method and provide some meters that come built in with .NET 8. I'm configuring the hosting meter and the meter for Kestrel and I'm also configuring the meter for HTTP. This is an example of how you might do this manually, but you don't really have to because we installed some instrumentation packages. So what you can do is configure the ASP.NET Core instrumentation, and you can also configure the HTTP instrumentation, which is also available with the NuGet package that we installed. And this is going to automatically configure the respective meters under the hood. One more thing that you want to do here is to configure an exporter for your meters, and all you have to do is say add OLTP exporter. This is enough configuration for our metrics for the time being. Let's also configure our traces. We're going to call the with tracing method, and then I can configure my tracing telemetry. And I'm going to immediately just apply my instrumentation packages. So I'm going to call the ASP.NET Core instrumentation, then I'm going to configure my HTTP instrumentation, and I also have access to my NED framework instrumentation because I added the respective NuGet package. And then I'm also going to configure an exporter for my application traces, and this is the base setup for configuring tracing and metrics inside of your application. When it comes to logging, we're going to access our builder, 
and then the logging provider and then I'm going to call add open telemetry on the logging provider which is going to allow me to configure my exporter for my application logs. So I'm going to say add OLTP exporter and this configures open telemetry for metrics, traces, and logs. So you can see the setup is very straightforward because these NuGet packages take care of most of the heavy lifting. Now I'm going to expose an endpoint that we can use to test our API. And what I already have inside of my application is a coffee shop database context with just a single entity. Let's call it a sale and it accepts a coffee type and a created on date and time. So what I'm going to do is expose a post endpoint. Let's just call it coffee, which is going to be the name of our resource. And then I'm going to accept a coffee type as an argument. And I'm also going to inject the coffee shop DB context. Let's go ahead and create our endpoint. And then inside of my endpoint, I'm just going to say database context sales, and let's add a new sale object. And I'm going to set the coffee type on the sale object with the value that we get inside of our endpoint. I'm going to set the created on date and time to date time UTC now. Then I'm going to call save changes on my database context. And for example, I can return the identifier of this new sale. So I'm going to grab the entity entry. And here I'm just going to return the entity entry access the entity instance and get the ID property. One more thing I want to do is add an iLogger here so that we can generate some structured logs inside of our endpoint. So let's inject an iLogger of program. I'll give it the name of logger. And at the start of my endpoint, I'm going to say if enum is defined and pass in the coffee type value. And I'm going to negate this. And if it's not defined, let's return a bad request. But I'm also going to write a log specifying that we got an invalid value. So let's write this as a warning log and let's write invalid coffee type. I'm going to provide this as a structured log value and then I will specify the coffee type as a structured log argument. If we do manage to create a sale, let's go ahead and log that and I will say log information and let's write successfully created the sale and I'm going to specify the entire sales object here as the value for my structured log. Now I'll also have to update my return statement to say results okay and then pass in the entity ID. So this should give us enough telemetry data to have something to work with, but we also need to configure a way for us to consume this telemetry data and then present it somehow. I'm going to show you a really cool thing you can do and inside of my docker compose file I'm going to configure another service. I'm going to call this the coffee shop dashboard and what I'm going to run here is going to be an Aspire dashboard Docker image. I'm going to expose the Aspire dashboard on a specific port. And because my services will be running inside of a Docker network, I also have to configure my OpenTelemetry exporter. So what I can do here is pass in a delegate to access the options instance, and I can set what is the endpoint that should be used to send OpenTelemetry data. How OpenTelemetry works is my coffee shop API is going to call a specific endpoint and it's going to send telemetry data to this endpoint and you can see in the comment here that the default value is going to be the port 4317 which is going to use grpc to send telemetry data and it can also use the http api on the port 4318 now i'm going to set this to a concrete value which is going to point to my aspire dashboard and this is the uri where it will be exposed the name of the service is going to match the name of my image in my docker compose file and then the port value that i'm specifying here is actually going to match the grpc port for collecting telemetry data and now what we have to do is to copy this setup for our traces and our logs or we can do something even better and get rid of this completely because I can configure the open telemetry exporter endpoint using an environment variable. So this is the environment variable that you need to set. And I'm going to specify the same value pointing to my Aspire dashboard. And we are ready to start our application. I'm going to start from the Swagger UI and send a few post requests to purchase some coffees. So let's send a request with the coffee type of zero, with a coffee type of one, coffee type of two, coffee type of three, and then I'm going to send some coffee type that doesn't exist, such as five and four. And now let's head over to the Aspire dashboard, which is exposed on this localhost port. And you can see that this is successfully consuming our telemetry data. 
So what you're seeing here are structured logs. You can also filter them based on your service. We only have one service, which is our coffee shop service. If we take a look at the structured log values, you can see more information about your logs. Remember that we specified the coffee type as the structured log argument, and you can see that the invalid coffee type has a value of five. You can also see what was the message for the structured log here. Also notice that our structured logs automatically have a trace ID and a span ID attached to them. So our logs are connected to our traces. If we take a look at the success log here, you can see what this information looked like. And right now, this is not serializing my sale object into a JSON document. I would need to add a logger provider like Serilog to be able to support this. Let's also take a look at the other stuff that we have, such as traces. Traces are very similar to logs, but they also include information about the duration of the actual trace in this case our API request and you can also see the details for this specific trace for example we can see what is the endpoint that we called what was the response from the server and you can see some other information inside for example we can see what is the service name and which version of the open telemetry SDK we are using and traces allow you to monitor an individual API request inside of a distributed system. This is because a trace can be associated with a span and we can collect multiple traces inside of a distributed system and then figure out what was going on with our request and how it was moving inside of our distributed system. And the last piece of open telemetry data that you have access to are metrics and you can see all of the metrics that we have here that are configured with our instrumentation. For example, you can see what is the request duration. So if I update this to the last 15 minutes, I should be able to see how long each request took. I also want to show you how to set up custom metrics so that you can start collecting telemetry data that is specific to your application. I'm going to create a static class that I will call the diagnostics config. And inside of it, I'm going to define a constant that's going to represent my service name. Then I'm going to define a static field that's going to represent my meter. And then I can use this meter to create counters. A counter isn't the only thing that you can create. If you access the meter instance, you can also create a histogram, an observable counter, and so on. But let's stick with a counter because this is a simple value. And what we are going to be counting is the number of sales. So this is going to be our custom metric. The next thing we have to do is to configure this with OpenTelemetry. And I'm going to update our setup here to specify the service name using our diagnostics config class. So I'm going to pass in the service name. I'm also going to configure my custom meter by calling the add meter method. And then I can access my diagnostics config and pass in the meter name. And then the last thing that's remaining is to increment my counter. I'm going to do that right after my call to save changes on my database context. And I'm going to do it by accessing the diagnostics config then I can use my sales counter and just call add. I need to specify how much I'm incrementing the counter by, which is going to be just one because we made one sale. And you can also provide key value pairs for your custom metric, which are called tags. And I'm going to specify a coffee type tag and a sales ID tag, which allows us to track some additional information with our custom metric. You can add even more tags if you want to. For example, we can record what is the date for this particular sale. So if I access my created on property and the date instance, I can provide this value, for example, as a short string. And now let's start our application and see how our custom metric is working. I'm going to go ahead and purchase a few coffees. So I'm going to pick a few coffees for each of my coffee types that actually exist. And then if I head over to my Aspire dashboard and I open up the metrics tab, you will see that I'm getting a coffee shop metric at the top. So this is our custom meter. And then we have access to our sales count, which is our custom metric. We can observe what is the value of this counter. You can see I have 15 sales and you can also filter them based on the coffee type. So you can see that our coffee types are rendered in a human readable way. We also have our sales date and the sales ID, which isn't particularly useful, but I wanted to show you how you can add this as an additional tag in your custom metric. In this example, I showed you how to configure an exporter and set it up with the Aspire dashboard. But if you wanted to configure this to work with something like Prometheus and Grafana, you would just have to set up the exporter. And for Prometheus, you also need to expose a scraping endpoint because Prometheus is going to be calling your service to access the telemetry data before exposing it to Grafana. You can grab the source code for this video completely for free from the pinned comment that's going to be right under this video. Also make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay awesome.